Hey, it's Matt Rausch. And Mike Brennan. And we're back with another episode of the M Squared TechCast. Uh, this is our second one on Zoom, I think, Mike? Yep, our Today second virtual session. But I think yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing this probably for months to come. Uh, hard to say yeah. that uh, I don't think we'll be back in studio for a while. Yeah, unfortunately, that's what it's certainly looking like out there. Um, it uh, just keeps getting crazier and crazier, worse and worse. Um, and we have a, a good show for you here. We have a lot of information about uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we have other tech information for you as we usually try to. This uh, show tries to cover the high tech scene in uh, Michigan. Uh, and we're starting out, um, I don't have my shameless plug bell uh, with me. I don't know if uh, we have one there in the studio, Mike. Um, but uh, we usually ring a little office bell when we plug our own employers. And so I'm plugging my own employer today and doing a little bit of self-congratulation for uh, Lawrence Technological University. Uh, we, we have Lynn Miller, pronounce your last name for me, please. I only know how to spell it. Watisha. Watisha? Okay, Lynn Miller Watisha. And she is uh, Director of E-Learning at Lawrence Tech. Uh, and E-Learning is something Lawrence Tech, like every institution of higher learning, has had to get really good at in the last couple of weeks. Um, basically, during its spring break, uh, the first full week of March, Lawrence Tech made the decision to uh, cancel face-to-face -face classes for the rest of the semester and move to an online class model. And uh, we extended our spring break by a week to give us a little more time to do that and then started online learning uh, full-time March 23rd. Lynn, I want you to tell us a little bit about how this was accomplished. And, and how many classes were moved? What, what happened to, to you know, make us go completely online? Well, um, the, the, the virus uh, made it so that we couldn't have people come to campus. So as we moved everything to uh, uh, social distancing and working from home, that affected all of our faculty and our classes. So uh, we were very fortunate that uh, the president and the provost and the cabinet extended break a week. We had lucky timing in that. Not every institution was as lucky. We had a week to work with faculty to prepare because we moved about 800 courses being taught by just under 300 faculty online in a week. Um, so we, again, we were able to use that week to train faculty, get things in place, get, get course materials in place, get everyone up to speed with some of the learning tools, the technology tools that we have available to us. So we, we benefited from that week and the students came back the following Monday and it was I you know, almost as close to business as usual as you can get. Um, a lot of our faculty communicated to their students and said, we meet on campus on Monday and Wednesdays at 11 a.m. We're meeting on Mondays and Wednesdays at 11 a.m., but it's going to be via Zoom. And here's the link. I'll see you on Monday. Um, that's okay. how most of our classes went. So, so the classes that Lawrence Tech is uh, offering online look kind of an awful lot like, like what, what people are looking at right now, right? Well, not exactly. When Lawrence Tech has a class that goes online, when a decision is made by a, a department, a college, to take up some courses online, we start working with them at least a semester in advance. We map out the course, we map out the modules, we look at learning activities that will go really well into an online format. We work with the faculty and we try to record some production quality uh, lectures. Um, we look at if we need to bring in lab components, if we need to bring in simulations and those kinds of things. And we work a good semester in advance to build that course so that when it launches at the start of a semester, all our faculty have to do is teach. The material is loaded, the activities are loaded, the exams are loaded. In this situation, we didn't have that luxury. Our faculty mm. are kind of doing it and teaching at the same time. They're recording lectures and putting exams online at the same time that they're, they're conducting their courses. So okay. you, you guys at Lawrence Tech, though, you had something going on previous, and now you've just expanded it to the entire curriculum, right? It might sound nitpicky um, in terms, but one of the things that, that I and my colleagues in, in e-learning and distance education are trying to do is to not call what we're doing right now online learning. Yes, it's, we're all online and that we're on the internet and we're using online and digital tools, 
but there is just a slight distinction. What this is really, um, I've heard it called emergency remote teaching. Mm. And some of the reasons why my colleagues are making that distinction is that we don't want faculty and students to think that this is what an online course encompasses. Because like I said, an online course, we've already, we've built all of the materials. Our, our faculty are, are in front of green screens and doing their lectures with, with um, images superimposed. It's a much more production quality course when we go online. LTU does have quite, we have entire degrees online and the courses are made to that quality. This, uh, we're, again, we're trying to just distinguish so that we're managing the expectation to the degree that we can. All right, so what, uh, what programs did Lawrence Tech offer online already? I know there was a Master of Architecture, right? We do our entire Masters of Architecture online. We have the um, Business and Information Technology Masters online, Masters of Civil Engineering, Engineering Management, um, Industrial Engineering, um, our Information Technology program. Uh, we have quite a few graduate certificates that are also available online. Um, building information modeling, for example. And again, all of those have been produced with a lot of time and preparation to make sure that they, they're they really good quality courses that have all of the ingredients that we know make a good instructional experience for students. Talk a little bit, I, I know when people think of online education, if it's just a straight up lecture, like a lot of the courses I had for my you know squishy little liberal arts degree, um, you know, it's it's just a straight up lecture and then you read some material and then you either write papers or take a blue book about what the professor has said and what you've read, right? You know, they ask you questions and you elaborate on an answer. That strikes me as pretty easy to do in an online format. More technical courses like, like Lawrence Tech offers, uh, there's a lot of lab work involved. Involved. You have people doing physical experiments, mm -hmm. people building physical objects. How, how is that handled online? Talk a little bit about that if you could. Well, again, it was the, the, the great week that we had to prepare. So we had a lot of our science faculty and some of our engineer, engineering faculty actually come into the labs and they conducted the labs themselves. And we sent a camera crew uh, to record them doing these labs. And then we worked with them to edit those, those lab videos and put some embedded questions in there. So students could actually comment in the video about why this this step in the procedure was necessary. What, what uh, was, what is the next step? You know, we could ask students that in the video, and then um, the faculty um, sent the data sets to the students so that the students could still do the data analysis for those labs. So mm -hmm. it's not not as quite the same as being there, but given the situation, it was a pretty good proximity. Yeah, I talked to one uh, mechanical engineering professor who talked about a heat transfer experiment where you have, it's, it's for an HVAC application, basically, mm -hmm. you know, like a furnace uh, or an air conditioner, you have two mm -hmm. metal plates and they're instrumented to, you know, so you know how hot or cold they are and you heat and cool the metal plate and that metal plate radiates heat or cool to the other metal plate and you measure the rate of heat transfer. There's a whole bunch of complicated math involved in that. Yeah. Um, and he said he did that experiment with a camera right in front of the plates and some of the students said they actually liked it better because they had a better view of what was actually happening. Yeah, we, we in some of our labs, we've sent uh, you know, two cameras so we can get two different angles and we're, we're miking the in instructor so we can, get a, we, we can get those different angles and we can actually see students can get those better views. And we also have the ability to do it live so that if we wanted to, to, like we're streaming this, if an instructor wanted to stream a lab and actually uh, have students interact during that, during that experiment, we can do that. We're waiting to see how long this continues, um, if we're gonna have to go all through the summer. Um, if that's the case, then we're going, faculty can still come to campus. So we would set up individual appointments with faculty to come into their labs and using appropriate social distancing, record more labs to do more, um, more development of content that could go on our online courses. And what's okay, good about I, I, that is we can use it next semester. So once we capture these things, even if we are back on campus, we can still use that footage to reinforce what the students are learning. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that, about I, <laughs> you're hardly an unbiased source since you are our head of e-learning, so you're obviously into it. Um, but but what do you see as the future? You know, what is this showing us about the future of higher education and 
e-learning and online higher education in general? Oh, that's the $100,000 question. Um, I also teach. I adjunct at some other universities, and um, I teach online. That doesn't mean that I don't really enjoy going to campus and meeting with my students. You can see that aha moment uh, when a student gets it much, uh, much easier if you're in a room together than when you're in, a, in a, an online situation. Um, I do think this has um, broken down some, some barriers or some obstacles. Um, speaking from Lawrence Tech, I know there were some faculty that were a little resistant to online education. And my hope is that now they're seeing that they can still have those connections with the students. They can still have those conversations and get to know those students and really establish a relationship with students, which we know is so critical to education and to learning. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to go all online. Um, it's been kind of a ping pong back and forth over the last decade or so, but I do think this will, um, will remove some obstacles and maybe some blinders that some people had about what we can and can't do online. Yeah, I know, you know, there's still that desire for the campus experience on the part of 18 to 22 year olds with, you know, a student union and sporting events and, and you know, dormitories mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Um, but, but I think this is especially instructive for the future of maybe continuing professional education, um, you know, advanced degrees, that kind of thing. And there's certainly room for a lot of blending in this. You know, you could have some courses yes. that are both. Yes, and if you look at some of the research, there's, there's a lot of support for a blended format. It kind of takes the best of both modalities. So I'm hoping that faculty who are recording some lectures during this pandemic that um, maybe wouldn't have done that, and they're posting them for students to watch at home, that they can use those, those recordings, um, still have students watch them at home, and then when students come to class, they can engage in deeper learning events. They can, they can do more simulations, more case studies, actually have more dialogue. We're shifting the lecture to home, and we're doing the activities in class. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's usually called the flipped learning model, and mm -hmm. it can be extremely effective in certain courses. Well, and what it also allows people to do is fit the schedule of higher learning to their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't have to be in class, you know, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at 10 in the morning. They can, they can do it whenever, you know, it's convenient for them. And I would think that might actually help at a moment rather than we're, we're, we're always looking to grow our enrollment. We have great programs. The, the trick is to get the word out there. Um, but yes, I think you're, you're absolutely right. It is a great way to uh, grow enrollment. And again, if you look at the research for the students that do take an on, pursue an online degree, most of them are within a 45 minute radius of campus. Uh, it's not a distance barrier to them pursuing their education. It's a time barrier. So if we can put these programs online, they can, uh, they can pursue their degree uh, in a way that works for their crazy schedule. I think we're going to have to leave it at that. We're out of time in this segment. So Sounds why don't you go good. ahead and uh, give the information up. People can reach out to you, Lynn. Um, you can email me at L, M-I-L-L-E-R-W-I, -L -L -E at ltu.edu. Okay, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of your name one last time, but I want to thank you for being with us today. It's Lynn Miller with Teach Up at, from Lawrence Tech. She's our director of e-learning. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Stay safe. Traditional right. four-year students love Lawrence Technological University's thriving campus life, but LTU has always met non-traditional students' needs, too. Lawrence Tech offers over 100 degree and certificate programs that can get adult students started or back on track. And most of our classes are conveniently offered evenings at our beautiful Southfield campus or online so you can balance your social, family, and work life even while you power up your career. Lawrence Tech, where blue devils dare.